There is an African proverb that says, it is the young people who make up the forest. In other words, the youth play an important role in the sustainability and development of a community. As part of the European Development Days, which is one of the world's leading development forums, a number of young people from the continent have been given an opportunity to take part in discussions through an initiative set up by the European Union. Hello, this is Africa Science Focus and I'm Sally Amutabi. Welcome back. Across Sub-Saharan Africa, science and development are being brought together by our creative young thinkers, activists and researchers. At this year's European Development Days Conference, 17 young leaders, including nine from Africa, will share their ideas and ambitions for a sustainable future with the world. From the continent's national parks and major cities, three of these young leaders tell Africa Science Focus reporter Michael Kaloki how they are driving sustainable development in their communities. Nomsa Kamanga from Zambia is an assistant researcher at the Zambian Carnival Program, a non-profit organization dedicated to conserving large carnivores in the ecosystems they reside in within Zambia. Nomsa, you are quite keen on ensuring that communities that reside near wildlife protection areas are involved in the management of the wildlife. Why do you feel that is important? Thank you very much for that question, Michael. Um, I feel that communities that uh, live adjacent to protected areas should be involved in every every level concerning the, the wildlife that they live with uh, because they are the key custodians of these natural resources. And you know, when you are keeping something, uh, you will know how best you can protect it compared to any other person from from outside who would know. So I believe these people are the ones that know the kind of challenges that they face and they're the ones that know how best they can protect the wildlife. I believe they should also have tangible benefits from protecting this wildlife because it is a lot of work to do and if there is nothing that they are seeing from it, they would not take keen interest even in protecting it. Nomsa, you have been recognized as a young leader. What do you feel is the role of young women leaders in Africa? So the role of young uh, women leaders in Africa is, uh, is an important role. In an industry like the conservation industry, a long time people thought that uh, women would not have room to penetrate into doing this. A lot of people had thought that it is a male-dominated industry, which I am one of those people that thought so. But now I have realized that there is room for everyone and we all have a role to play, you know, in encouraging and in bringing in new ideas as young leaders and as women. Just being a woman will help and we've got different types of ideas that men would share. So I believe as a young leader and as a woman, you come in uh, with fresh ideas that are different from men. And so we play a vital role in, in the conservation industry and in every area of, of our life as a whole. Do you think enough is being done from a policy level by governments on the continent in regards to protecting wildlife? Or do you feel there is more that can be done? Um, there is a lot that is being done in ensuring the protection and the security of these wildlife species. But there is also a lot more that can be done. I believe we are fighting a global challenge and these are challenges that will need global response. Um, I believe there's a lot that can be done in empowering, you know, law enforcers and, and other people that are doing all they can in the forefront in the protection of our wildlife species. While Nomsa in Zambia is a leader in conservation research, Olivia Livingstone in Liberia wants to inspire young people to take on ocean pollution and unregulated fishing. As a green steward, I have been working with 
Liberian men and women, as well as children, to ensure that everyone knows the importance of sustaining a clean environment and to ensure that everyone is involved in the process of promoting a clean environment. For, in order to achieve this, I have worked in different sectors. I have worked with the waste management sector to ensure that waste management is done not only by men, but also by women, and to educate Liberians on the importance of recycling their waste as well as reducing the use of waste materials. Olivia is the founder and executive director of Green Stewards Incorporated, a nonprofit that looks for innovative and sustainable solutions to the continent's environmental challenges. I see fishermen going out to sea and coming back home, why hoarding their nets? Instead of seeing fish that they went for, they see over 40% of their cash is plastic materials. These fishermen depend on fish to eat. This is how they sustain their families. So if we pollute our land and in turn pollute the ocean, it will affect their livelihood. This is not only about the ocean biodiversity. This is not only about terrestrial species. This is about fishermen who depend on these resources. So if they are going to sea and they are finding only plastic bags, you will notice that fishing communities will have nothing to use to raise incomes for their family. And this is something that the world cannot afford right now. This is something that the world does not want. And it's rampant in Africa, especially Liberia. And what's even worse is that it's now more like a human rights issue because of how illegal vessels treat local fishermen when they get caught at sea. As a young leader for the European Development Day, I see this as an honor and I see this as an opportunity to continue to inspire others. Using this platform, which is a global platform, I intend to inspire not only Liberians, but women, especially young women all around the world. Because in order to get here, I had to apply, I had to go through the vetting process. And this is something that a lot of young women, especially women I have worked with, in the environmental sector. This is something that they, they stay away from. They don't want a competition. It's about confidence. So one thing I tell young women, in order to be a leader, you need to believe in yourself because you can only, you can only inspire people. You can only try to educate people if you believe in yourself and if you are passionate about what you are doing. So young leaders, young African leaders should realize that you have to be passionate about what you are doing. You need to have a goal. You need to say, I want to make a change, no matter what it takes. Climate storyteller and social entrepreneur David Watson Mwabila has recruited bees to create a buzz around sustainable development. Back to Michael. Another of the European Development Day's young leaders is David Mwabila. David is from Zambia and co-founded Fourth Line, a social enterprise that has set up a rural livelihood improvement program assisting farmers add value to their produce. David, part of what you do is looking at how to harness natural resources to assist in food production. Could you tell me a bit about this? Oh, thank you so much, Michael, for the great question. What we are doing at Fourth Line is empowering the most vulnerable and rural communities in Zambia harness their opportunities by taking advantage of the various resources locally that they have, you know, to be able to produce high value products for local and export markets. So we work with the smallholder farmers, we empower them with highly productive beehives and be venom harvesting devices which we specifically designed to fit their climate so we use these tools in the production of honey and bee venom you are passionate about promoting sustainable development in your country zambia and the rest of the continent why is this that important to you i was raised by my grandmother and part of my daily work involved taking care of my grandmother's livestock as well as farming and considering the fact that uh, 
the agriculture sector in countries such as Zambia is dependent on rainfall. Climate change has distorted the patterns of the rains. And as patterns of the rains are distorted, so are the livelihoods of rural and small scale farmers. For example, in communities where I come from, individuals have, so have lost their sources of livelihood. And as a result, most of them have opted to the cutting down of trees, you know, to produce charcoal, which accelerates the poverty, hunger, and the climate change situation even further. For me, who has lived amongst these communities, who has experienced uh, climate change induced poverty and hunger firsthand, this is something which I'm passionate about because I have really felt, I've really seen it with my own two eyes, I've really experienced it, and it has been the driving force behind me and my partner, Chiani Kanakasamu finding a co-founding fourth line you know in order to be able to provide sustainable solutions as well as equip communities to be able to adapt to climate change you have been recognized as a young leader what role do you feel young people have to play in the development of the continent africa is a young continent what i mean by the young continent is that the majority of the people living in Africa are the youth. And because the majority of the people living in the African continent are the youth, most of them have no access to opportunities. And as we deprive these youths who are innovators, who are critical thinkers, who have a lot of energy to really play a critical role in the transformation of our continent, we are actually depriving the continent of its potential to grow. As they say, the youth are the hope of the future. For Africa Science Focus, I'm Michael Kaloki in Nairobi, Kenya. Good luck to our young leaders when they take to the stage at the European Development Days, streaming live on the 15th and 16th of June. But hang on for one minute. It's time for a QA and a segment. This week, our question comes from Nakachenge Cindy, a student at Mariam High School in Kampala. Hi, African Science Focus. I'm Nachap Kezia Cindy, a senior three student from Mariam High School, Chisasi. Why is COVID a disease that weakens a person? And why does it affect the lungs? not the other body parts. Now, lung is one of the major organs affected by COVID. This is not surprising considering the mechanism by which the virus gains entry into the cells. The virus binds the ACE receptor, which is abundant in the lungs and heart. The virus can directly damage the heart by infecting the cells or through exaggerated inflammatory attack by the cytokine storm. This can cause heart failure, abnormal heart rhythm, can also lead to heart attack due to its effect on the blood vessels of the heart. It may be too early to ascertain the long-term cardiac abnormalities in COVID-19 survivors. However, emerging data suggests that the cardiac abnormalities caused by the virus tend to persist or set a fertile ground for worsening cardiovascular disease. And thanks to Dr. Ramon Moronkola for that COVID-19 insight. If you too have a question that you want answered, get in touch. Send a voice message via WhatsApp to plus 254-799-042-513 and you could feature on Africa Science Focus. If you liked our show, you can subscribe and download more episodes on your favorite podcast app. And don't forget to leave a review. Today's program was produced by Harrison Lewis. The editors were Fiona Broom and Jackie Oparafatoye with reporting from Michael Kaloki. Africa Sands Focus is produced by SciDevNet and distributed in association with your local radio station. I'm Sally Amutabi. See you again next week. This program was funded by the European Journalism Center through the European Development Journalism Grant Program with support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation.